ladies, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, if this is your first time seeing me on your screen, where the hell have you been? If you're into anything thrifting, fashion or styling related, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join the squad. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know what I'm about to say. Thank you so much. Your love and support really does mean the, the world to me. Yeah, I see you, you see me, like, we got it. Um, I've been on a mild hiatus. You know, I just drop in casually, pop by your house whenever. When we link up, it's like no time has gone by anyway, so that's the relationship we have, me and you. So I'm back on your screens, you know. Um, been a minute but I thought since I've gone away for so long maybe I'll try and give you a good old jam-packed video today because you know I heard the streets were looking for me they weren't but I'm here now so if you are ever really in need of your girl be sure to be following me on the Instagrammables on the clock app you know the ticks the talks I'm there I'm pretty much actually only on those two platforms. I'm not cool enough to be on like several platforms and spread myself socially thin like that because at a app like Twitter I feel like you have to be able to keep up with in order to grow a following and know what's popping. The only time I log into Twitter is when I'm watching like Love Island because the commentary. I love the internet purely when they just have immediate like I don't know who birthed these hilarious individuals that just know and have great comedic timing. Twitter's really so today's video I wanted to do a little like show and tell, show you guys what things I've been making since learning to sew during lockdown. Please don't, you know, expect to be seeing gowns that are Met Gala worthy, no. I'm not a seamstress, but I can jimmy rig a costume together. I've got a good old £100 sewing machine, it's nothing special, don't expect it. I've not even got an overlocker machine. All I want to say is it's not that I can't afford it and it's not that I don't have it, I don't have the time. So I'm still doing my hems, literally with like the zigzag option on my sewing machine. But yeah, I really have been enjoying learning how to make things. I've kind of done a variety, so I'll show you guys a bit of accessories that aren't so much historically inspired, maybe like 90s, 80s grunge kind of things. And then the other pieces are like 16th to 18th century inspired. I have an addiction, an addiction to period dramas, period pieces, looking at historical garments, all of the things so whilst I was like drooling on Pinterest and other people's Instagram accounts who do like historically inspired clothing I just felt like I needed to be part of the squad so that was the real decider and why I started to learn how to sew anyways and to go down the historically inspired route rather than the historically accurate because following a guide which is mainly hand sewn or showing like old school techniques I just feel like it was just too much Ain't nobody got time for that especially if I'm just learning how to sew it might be a bit of a longer video than usual strap in get yourself a drinky poo <laughs> I wanted to give a little bonus seeing as I've been away for so long and throw in some movie and TV drama recommendations that I have been loving. I think I've watched some of these recently and some of these not so recent so my memory of what actually happens in them might be a little fuzzy so if I get any of the actors names wrong, dates, errors, please forgive me. I also will be looking down because there's 15 movies and dramas I'm about to give y'all and that was just too much for my cute little login to remember all in one so um yeah if i'm looking at it's just notes i had of uh, what that movie was actually about these movies have really been inspiring where the direction of things i want to make is going because they are a reflection of things i'm interested in i wanted to comprise a list that doesn't have your obvious choices so just a disclaimer i will not be talking about marie antoinette because we all know she's that girl we've all watched it by now hopefully and if you haven't get it on your friggin ASAP pronto. I need it by end of day today. Like, that's your homework. But I wanted to throw in some movies you may not have heard about. I won't say all the movies in this list are great storylines. Some of the themes are quite repetitive as you'll notice when I get through like halfway through the list. The more of this is the visual. I'm, I can watch a terrible movie as long as I can be engaged by the set or the clothing. That's that on that. So without further ado, let's get into the first movie, which is a 
movie called Orlando and it stars Tilda Swinton, who I just think absolute goddess, who plays a nobleman called Orlando. He gets to inherit his parents' house, but only through the grace of Queen Elizabeth first whose only condition for him to get this house is that he cannot age he cannot wither and he cannot fade i think she basically the queen found him very attractive she was like i'm not gonna let you have this house but somehow some way start bathing in milk every single day because i don't want this mug to change i want it to be this beautiful period he doesn't really understand but he accepts and then one random day he wakes up as a woman and so tilda is now in a new body but now that she's a woman in this century she has to obviously try and avoid standing in society from diminishing she has to marry then the movie follows her navigating how she will basically not fall into ruin <laughs> it also travels through time i think we go from like the 17th century up until like the early 90s so it's a really good movie for costume because you get to travel through different eras different decades of fashion and i think they do an amazing job i will say it's more on the art house cinema wavelength like there's some bits if i wasn't paying attention i may not understand what the hell's going on but i still think it's a great movie the next movie is a movie called dangerous beauty which i really did like it does have that early 2000 filter or certain gaze over it that makes it look very hazy so most of the film i was squinting to actually see some detail in everyone's wardrobe overall it's still a really good movie it's based on a woman who is in love with her friend but her friend is in like higher ranking in society and the backdrop is venice most women who aren't just born into riches try to become courtesans and so does she because she needs to be able to afford money for her family to survive and live and um, yeah she becomes one of the most famous courtesans beautiful sleeves in that movie beautiful bodices i love the use of color as well in that film so yeah definitely check that one out next we have dangerous liaisons which i'm pretty sure most of us may have heard about now but maybe this is just a reminder or a refresher for you to go and watch because it's fab. It stars Glenn Close, who's a fabulous actress, John Makovich, which I honestly I didn't see the appeal before I saw him in this movie, but this is the one role where I was like, there's something about the way you're playing this that makes you attractive. There's no shade to him, but I just didn't personally find him in any way alluring before this role. Um, but yeah, he did a great job. They, The movie almost reminded me of like Cruel Intentions in a kind of way. But I loved it. It has like a young Uma Thurman, young Keanu Reeves, a gorgeous Michelle Pfeiffer. Honestly, that woman defies the laws. I just She just the wardrobe in that is delicious so yes go check that out next we have a movie called perfume um now with this one i wasn't following the whole way along the premise of the storyline is very easy a boy is born with an incredible sense of smell and it leads him to be able to make some of the best perfumes in the world but the other downside to that is like he's just obsessed with smells now my boyfriend said i'm quite critical of movies but there are some elements of his incredible sense of smell that didn't really make sense it's like sometimes he could smell maybe like 20 feet away from him other times it's like he can smell all the way to australia and back and he can just figure out where someone is and like i need there to be some consistency here my only other critique was that you can tell the director was definitely a man because most of the shots are just shot through the male gaze there's some bits in the movie i'm like i didn't need this this didn't need to because even the last scene for me there's just a massive it's almost like a mural of skin and yeah i guess if that's your zhuzh that's your zhuzh there was some scenes that the movie still would have been fine without but overall some of the outfits were again very tasty it's a good mix because it follows poor and rich ball so you get to see a balance of different outfits not just the beautiful gowns and balls and all that kind of stuff so yeah next up we have a movie called interlude in prague which follows mozart who's en route to become a world-renowned composer um, but at the time of the film he's very much still at the beginning of his fame he is composing music for different operas and he comes across a young lady who will perform some of the pieces at the opera and they also start seeing each other in a romantic sense 
So overall, he just wants to try and keep her safe as much as possible because she's quite naive about the world. So yeah, Mozart is trying to navigate keeping her as safe as possible whilst also being this amazing composer. Overall storyline, maybe like a six out of 10, but I did like the movie, so yeah, check that out. I'm gonna try and go through some of these quickly now because there are quite a few, as you can tell. I don't want this to go on forever. Next, we have a Danish movie called A Royal Affair. It does have a few English speaking parts because one of the characters are meant to be British, but overall the movie's in Danish. I'm sure you can find it with subtitles because yeah, I just searched online and managed to find it. It has Alicia Vikander and Mads Mikkelsen. I'm sorry if I'm saying his name wrong, but I'm not well versed in Danish names. <laughs> he is. I've only just come to see his beauty as well um, and that came about through falling into the wrong black hole of TikTok. There was just hundreds and hundreds of TikToks dedicated to his beauty and yeah. It follows a British princess who's come to marry the king of Denmark and he's a bit weird in the head and she feels a bit isolated because she doesn't have many friends she's had to move country not really be able to bring any of her family along with her or any of the things she's come to love about england so she befriends this german doctor who's mad so the movie follows their blossoming relationship which also then leads to their downfall but um it was yeah very good movie i really enjoyed that one so check that out next we have a movie called anonymous i can't remember what the name of the theory is but there's a theory that william shakespeare didn't write his own plays so this movie is based on who they theorize actually wrote Shakespeare's plays pretty cool a string of great British actors in that movie I really enjoyed that so yeah check that out next we have Elizabeth the Golden Age which honestly Kate Blanchett what can't the woman do and is a movie that probably has one of my favorite dresses in cinematic history like I I'll show the picture of the dress but it's just Delectable. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. I can't even say any more than that. Like just based on this dress, go watch the movie. I'm sure you might have already come by it, but um, watch it again and then watch it one more time because it's great. <laughs> Next. We have Ever After, a Cinderella story, which is basically the Cinderella story told in like the Renaissance period. Our fave Drew Barrymore does a great job of being cute and just her goddamn gorgeous self. But yeah, definitely give that a look if you want to see Ren Faire cottagecore vibes. I just, I really loved it. And I'm actually wanting to make my next dress project based on the, I think it's called the Dream Dress. It's really beautiful. I kind of just really love the sleeves. And the fabric and yeah table in between filming anyways here's the dress i've been working on the past couple weeks this little brown piece a feature to the to the dress i just don't know there's loads of great outfits in that movie though and it's just a nice fun movie to watch next up we have some dramas i'm just gonna reel these off i just feel like my gums have been yapping too much yeah uh, shanice shanice yeah your mouth is uh moving a lot like a rat yappa 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 shut it place <laughs> That's, we have the borgias every costume in that drama if I, out of all this list, could only be given one option, it would be Borgia's wardrobe because, yeah. It's set in 16th century Rome and follows the power of the Catholic Pope and the church and society, sex, family, all of the typical period drama notions. There's also some very unneeded incest sprinkled in there for viewership joy, so have fun with that. I still would say great, great drama. Very sad it never got renewed for the fourth season, but you'll still have a good time. But then we have The Spanish Princess, which I think is the third installment in a set of series. The first one is called The White Princess, then The White Queen, and then we have The Spanish Princess. You kind of have to watch the first two to get the third one, but you can still enjoy the third one if you can't be bothered to watch the first two seasons. Yeah, it's following Catherine of Aragon and her reign as the first wife of King Henry VIII. What can I say? Good show. 
Next we have Tulip Fever. Oh, sorry, this is a movie. I don't know why I didn't mention it in the movie section. Which again has Alicia Vikander doing an amazing job and Christopher Waltz, he's great. Premise is an artist who falls for a young married woman while he's commissioned to paint her portrait during the tulip mania of 17th century Amsterdam. I would say in those two sentences that summed up the whole movie. Next we have a series called The Miniaturist, which is fan Um It's a three part series against the backdrop of 17th century Amsterdam. It has our beautiful fave Anna Taylor Joy and I hope I'm saying his name right but Papa Asadu. Um, he was in I May Destroy You again he's just a great actor and this was really good to see him in because um, it's obviously very limited representation of POC or black characters within period dramas but every now and again they're thrown in the mix in and amongst all these movies so um, I quite like the miniature. We have Versailles which follows the reign of King Louis XIV and the construction of Versailles in France. Out of all of these if you want to talk about dripping in wealth this whole thing looked like well some of it was actually shot at the side as well so that's probably why it looks so goddamn amazing anytime they were filming in the site you could smell the opulence you know um this one i would say it focuses more on the men's wardrobe which i really loved because it's always it's always a really beautiful corset in these movies isn't it for the women we always get our shout outs and our beautiful wardrobe but this did a good job of highlighting king louis extravagant and decadent taste his fashion sense that he managed to sprinkle all throughout court as well so yeah great 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 jackets in that show as well and fab wigs lastly you'll be glad to know we have wolf hall i'm just going to read this off set in the period 1500s to 1535 wolf hall is a sympathetic fictionalized biography documenting the rapid rise of thomas cromwell in the court of king henry VIII through the death of sir thomas moore a lot more serious in tone than the other ones i mentioned but yeah they're a very good series and now i can breathe now on to the thing you're really here for. This see me show off some of the junk I've been making. This is more just to show and tell us. So I probably won't go into detail about how I drafted patterns for this because honestly I didn't buy patterns for most of the things I made. I just freehanded. I looked at shapes. A big tip I would say is if you also don't want to or can't, I couldn't always afford buying new patterns, so is look at the shapes within a garment that you're looking to replicate or find a similar item you have in your wardrobe that you're trying to make and just trace out the shapes that are on the garment because I know it sounds obvious but any garment is really just a mix match of random shapes and so never feel too intimidated is what I've come to learn if there are any tutorials I followed during some of the things I made I will try and remember to put them in the description box below so hope you guys enjoy like I said I'm a newbie so um be kind be kind be kind i'm gonna cut to dressing up me hey hey so it's awkward to try on tie i just wanted to mention that i was watching some of my clips back and i realized sometimes when i was showing something they wouldn't be in a shot or didn't record so i decided to re-record some of the shots might look a little bit different and disjointed but i thought it's better to show all the items as best as i can rather than not showing them at all also Sorry for my very limited backdrop. My room isn't that big, so if you guys don't mind, this is real life, you know? I thought I would show you the accessories first, which 90s grunge kind of inspired masks. Then we'll move on to the historically inspired pieces. If you want to skip and you're not interested in the non-historically inspired pieces, then I'll try and leave a timestamp so you can just click ahead. But um, it's only a few masks, so yeah. First up, we have this tartan mask that I made, which was inspired by a creator called I think gender Anomi on TikTok and Anomi on Instagram. I'll try and put some pictures of their work because just honestly so so amazing. I can't wait to try and buy one of their pieces but um I really wanted a mask that was a bit more funky than just the regular blue disposable mask so I decided to make one with bunny ears. So it looks like that and um yeah i just wanted something that was a bit more punk you know giving some vivian westwood tees it has a cute little bow in the front 
I also made it reversible so the black side also has a cute little bow. For this I just searched a DIY mask tutorial on YouTube and it honestly was like the first one. I'll try and leave a link if I remember but you could search any DIY mask tutorial and they're pretty easy to follow and then I just freehanded the ears. I think if you're trying to get into sewing masks are definitely a really good easy starter project because you maybe need like half a meter of fabric if that if you don't want to do any additional elaborate designs but yeah I really like this one. Then I also made it in pink because I just wanted something that made me look approachable and sweet because I find with masks you never know if people are smiling and with this it's gonna be very hard to look like a mean person. That's this one very hard to talk with them off. But yeah, it's literally the same as the tartan one. It has a cute little piece of lace and a bow. Accessory is another mask. Again, it's just one of those tie. There you go. You tie it at the top and at the back. Mm -hmm. This was another mask inspired by Anomi. I really want to get my hands on some of their work anyway because all the designs I see go up. I think once a month Anomi does a drop, but I'm just like saving my coins ready to buy. Next, I have this mask this is the last mask i'll show you guys this was more of a diy than a fully made by me i had this pink gingham mask from depop and it shrunk in the wash but i didn't want to throw it away i didn't have someone with a smaller face to give it to so i just decided to add some ruffle trim to the edge and a nice little rose uh, that I got at like a haberdashery. I think it just makes it look so cute. I feel like I'm meant to be going to like a teacup party or I look like a muffin or something like that. So yeah, this is what this one looks like. Very cute, very neat. Then to go with my bunny mask, I actually made these leg warmers. I was kind of inspired by like 90s cyberpunk rave aesthetic. So um, I don't know the best way if you can see that, but it's got like a d-ring on the edge with some tassels and yeah i really love the look of leg warmers quite j fashion inspired as well so yeah this is the last accessory these are just arm warmers that i was in my like very core bag it's very easy it's literally just a tube and because it's stretchy fabric you don't have to do anything you measure around your arms and sew and then i just attach these two little satin bows onto the front and that was that next we have this regency inspired shift chemise thing um i really wanted the chemise to wear under like corsets and stuff that i'm making but also something i would wear itself as like a summer type dress I had a spare bed sheet that I thrifted from the charity shops and decided to turn it into a dress. Some bows on the side, which is really cute. I am puff sleeve stan. I try and put puff sleeves on anything possible, really. <laughs> but yeah, this is what the back looks like as well. Didn't 100% go to plan. I still like the end product. I followed a girl called Mariah something. I'll try and link her tutorial below. And then the sleeves, I followed another tutorial that came with a free pattern. So I just printed that out and used that pattern and made this sleeves slightly bigger than the pattern to get a super puff effect. The shift in the video I followed didn't have an umpire line but I just wanted to add one because I think it makes it quite easy to get in and out of but um this one. I have this what do I call it kind of like a Gibson inspired Victorian-esque shirt with a 70s collar I really wanted to make something with darts again and this was my first time trying to make a proper collared shirt there is a lot of issues with this, especially mainly on the like collar itself, but I, I kind of don't mind. I, I, there's some bits of me that are like, do you know what, I like being able to notice that it looks homemade and then there's other parts where I'm like, I kind of want it to look as professional as possible. But where I am in my sewing journey, I'm happy with how this turned out. I think one of my favourite eras is probably Regency, Rococo, Georgian, Renaissance, but I dabbled in looking at Victorian style silhouettes and I really like the shirts from the Victorian era. Like ladies shirts just felt a bit more zhuzhy. I don't know what word to give. Yeah, so I wanted something with a bit more zhuzh. I think this might be nice styles like a vest or some cool like tailored trousers or maybe even a midi skirt. But yeah, I'll try 
trying to give you like history bound 101. Next up we have this green gingham dress. So like a character out of Hansel and Gretel or something when I'm wearing this. But um, it was more like very court inspired. I saw, I think it's a Jane Norman or Anne Summers dress. I think maybe Anne Summers. It's this pink and white gingham dress you've probably seen floating around on your Pinterest boards. But I really wanted that. But the Depop resale prices were not it. So got screenshots of the dress from different angles from the front and back and just saw the shapes it was comprised of and then just tried to riff on that. I also wanted something other than pink so it didn't look too girly and I could maybe wear it in other ways than one. So yeah there were a few flaws with the dress because maybe I think this was maybe the second dress I had ever made. I had made it from scratch with no previous drafting pattern knowledge. I think that's why a few things didn't fit the way it should but I'm still happy with the overall result. I really wanted to add ribbons because I've been seeing ribbon stay inspired kind of things a lot on my Instagram and Pinterest board so I was happy I could incorporate that to this design. So this is the back. Uh, as a zip. I can't remember if on the original dress it was a side zip or buttons but I just wanted something that was easier to get on and off of myself so um, yeah I quite like the length. I think I saw in some comments the Anne Summers one might have been a bit short so this took my height into consideration. I'm 5'7 so sometimes things I see online come up short on me but yeah I really like this one. Next we have this Hierarchy Renaissance inspired shirt. I usually wear it with some things so that's why it's not as shapely in the body area but I really loved this. I showed this maybe a few videos ago when I was showing my history bound outfit in one of my all my styles in one video and yeah I love billowy sleeves probably my fave sleeves after puff sleeves. I made this as like a base layer to use when I'm wearing like corsets or dresses on top so I really really do love this. It's literally just comprised of squares and rectangles so very easy to make. I definitely recommend and making something like this when you're first getting into sewing or a chemise because they're usually very simple instructions to follow and ease you into sewing very nicely. Next we have this corset which was definitely my first venture into making a corset. I again bought a bed sheet. I think this time I got it from eBay instead of the charity shop. That's another tip I'd recommend when you're just learning and you want to mess around with fabrics. You get so much fabric. I usually just search king size, find the cheapest listing on eBay and go with that. That's how I found this fabric. I followed Nava Rose's tutorial and I edited the free pattern she gave in that video to fit what I wanted the style of my corset to look like and to fit my dimensions. I think the one she has in that video is a one size corset. This is the back. I have to cut this ribbon a bit. Really, really liked how this turned out. Next up, we have this corset. I'm so sorry, I'm not going to put this one on. It's so long to lace up and I'm in a little bit of a rush. But I'll show a video of me trying it on. This was probably my favourite piece. No, no, that's a lie. This is my second favourite piece third favourite piece I've probably made today because yeah it was my second time trying to make a corset and I just loved the overall finish. This one's a lot more boned than the first corset I showed you. I've been following some really cool corset makers online. Vanula is an amazing amazing designer. Literally anything she drops I'm like jaw on the floor. I'm really terrible at remembering names but I'll show some inspo. There's other YouTubers. Uh, yeah. The list is endless but um i just wanted something i just wanted to try something in a more bright in a bright colorway so i think yellow and blue really go nicely together and uh, this again was the nava rose corset pattern i added these tabs at the bottom of it to look more like stays until i can actually buy real stays patterns this will do for now as like a stays inspired corset. Next we have this dress which was another one that I just kind of riffed. I didn't follow any pattern or anything like this. I was just trying to make a dress from scratch myself to try and learn along the way. And this is what I came up with. Puff sleeves of course. It's kind of like a smock style dress. I was looking at the Simone Rocha I think spring 2021 collection. I just love her use of ribbons and everything that's like feminine and doll like and yeah this was a corset detail I wanted to 
add at the back so I'll show you lacing in the next shot when I style this up differently but this is how the dress looks by itself I'd probably wear this as like some Mary Janes or some boots I think it just looks adorable so this is it with the collar this was just a detachable collar I found on like eBay I didn't do it up the back so I have no idea how to put it on but I'll try and insert a picture or video of what it looks like when I added the satin ribbon and lace it up like that but yeah so this is another way I'd style it when I don't want it to just be like a bare collar but yeah none of these are really styled up in any way I just wanted to showcase so maybe in another video if you guys are interested let me know I'll do how I style the piece I made also made a matching bow <laughs> with the leftover fabric so that's another idea you can do when you have some leftover fabric I probably obviously put my hair up in a better way like half up half down always try and think of masks hair bows ties anything like that just to use up scrap fabric so that you don't end up with a stash of loads of little pieces of fabric you can't use or for stuffing of things I found I want to attempt to make a quilted jacket one day and all the loose scraps I'm gathering I'm gonna try and use it as stuffing for the lining so uh, that's another idea you use if you also have some leftover scrap fabric Next we have this 70s inspired dress. This was probably one of the first dresses I actually made when I was just playing around with designs. I actually bought the wrong fabric for some reason. I was looking for a purple cotton in this kind of shade to make trousers and then I realised trousers in this fabric might not be that comfy so I decided to make this dress. Try and find a project that will help me learn how to use darts so I wanted to make something that incorporated that in the design and this is what I came up with. The shirt I think is like old, pretty little thing. This is the back. There's a lot of fit issues with this, like just the overall shaping isn't great. It's like a Monet. From far away, it looks like you get the vibe. Up close, you can probably see inside this garment, you can see the issues. It's all a learning curve, so that's fine. I haven't actually worn this out yet. I don't know why I haven't had the confidence. Maybe because I can see the mistakes and the more you see something, you're like, oh, that's not that good. But I eventually do want to wear everything I make because I think it's good practice to wear things you make and believe in the design you're, you're creating. So, um, yeah. Next we have this simple A-line skirt. This was more like 60s inspired and this was the first skirt I've ever made. Again, I wanted something that incorporated darts so I can figure out that and pockets as well. Here's, there's one thing I needed when learning to sew. It was how to make pockets to add to all women's clothing <laughs> because we don't get enough. I showed that in my video while showing all my styles as well. So I'll maybe insert a clip if I can find it um, of me trying it on. But yeah, I think this one went pretty well actually. I didn't have many issues with it. It went as planned, I'd say, but I don't know why I haven't worn it that much. I think green, I do love green, but this is like an in-between shade of green I love that maybe helped me with ideas of how to style this. It's a very simple skirt, so I don't know why I'm having issues thinking of outfits, but yeah, let me know in the comments below. Next we have this dress which was in the ranking of my top three things I've made. It's a chemise à la reine. I'll say inspired because it didn't follow the methods of how you'd usually make one. This is my Marie Antoinette-esque summer dress. The only reason I couldn't follow the real ways to make it is because I didn't have a dress form. So if anyone else who's ever thinking of making a chemise à la reine but doesn't have a dress form or a friend to help you make one when you're like fitting it on your body. I did this by following a normal shift pattern to tutorial and I just made the fabric extra extra long. It's very hard to explain and because I had such limited space in my room very hard to do like a tutorial or anything like that but cut the body of a shift like three times bigger than you normally would and then it's just a case of adding the elasticated bits on the inside. Maybe if someone really wants to know they can message me on Instagram and I'll try and explain way better there but the way I did it was still quite simple it was just very time consuming because you're sat pinning stuff into place for a very long time but I think a chemise is fiddly like that anyways it's just a very long time because it's such a long stretch of fabric eventually i got there and finished it this is the back the frills I literally just did like a long 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 piece of fabric set my sewing machine to the longest stitch and then just added like ruching along it so that's how I got the frills at the top and yeah it's just so breathable again I'd probably wear like black shorts underneath this or black pants because then you can't see it unlike my white pants glaring through at you right now so apologies but um yeah it's a uh, dreamy floaty dress and I just love floating around in this piece. Next we have one of my favourite dresses. It was my Italian Renaissance 16th century Borgia 
inspired dress. I've been watching the Borgias. I think every season has amazing, amazing costumes. So if you want to see beautiful, beautiful gowns, how many times do I say that in this video? But um, honestly, top tier outfits. And Lucretia Borgia, I think is my wardrobe crush. Everything the babe walked out in, I was like, ha, what, uh, can, I could never. So I decided to make my imitation version. The back has a cute little cape. I found a shearing, is it called shearing? I found a, a regular puff sleeve tutorial and then I found a shearing tutorial. And then I just combined the two, the idea. So I made a massive big puff sleeve and then went in with like elasticated thread and that's how I did those effects. And then I just got some ribbon, made some bows and hand sewed the bows on the side. I got some pearl trimming from eBay, a cute little bow. I think that was also from eBay. The organza, I think I used around two, no, three meters, which I didn't need to, but I'm a sucker for organza. And I added that little cape at the back. I didn't use a pattern for this but after I finished making this dress I then saw a picture on Pinterest of like a 70s style dress pattern and I was like I could have just bought that pattern and made this but it was still fun making this I would always just try to edit the pattern to fit the style that you want because you might not ever find the exact thing you're looking for online or if you go to a sewing class then you can obviously ask your tutor there but if you can't or you don't have access to those kind of things definitely just try and become imaginative I think most of the things I've made are a mashup of finding a few resources online and then just becoming imaginative with the small skills that I've found. So yeah, I saw that it had cream sleeves and a black bodice and I definitely would remake this dress in that style because I love the silhouette of this dress. Probably change the fit of the bust just a tiny bit but I do feel like back in that era of clothing it was all about bust to your neck <laughs> but I'm no clothes historian so please don't come for me on how silhouette should actually look I'm just here for the visuals I'm I'm not one of the accuracy babes so I'm fine with that the most I know is that stays and corsets are different but same but different <laughs> one of my favorite dresses hope you like I also made the pearl snood. I showed it in that video that I keep referencing, so clearly that's a sign to go watch that video I keep talking about. It'll be linked in the description box below. But yeah, this took like two months to complete because it was literally sewing pearls religiously. I can't remember how much the final count was, maybe around like 492 pearls or 470, I can't remember, but it was a ball ache. So I was like, anytime I wear this dress, I must show you the snood. I hope you like. Lastly, but absolutely not least, is my Selkie inspired dress. If you have seen, if you've even been on Instagram in the past three to six months, you've probably seen these Selkie dresses all over your feed, all on your explore page. I absolutely love that brand. And my dream goal is to have my wardrobe filled with pieces from Selkie. But in the meantime, between time, I decided to make my own to fit my desires of owning one. I actually used a top I wasn't using anymore. I think I got ages ago at my charity shop. So this was, just a ruched top and it had sleeves similar to this puff wasn't as big so I decided to make some puff sleeves that were just slightly big and rip out the old ones put these in then I added some white lace because I wanted something to contrast the neckline and then this is probably about six meters of gathered organza I did it in two layers and then I had one lining layer if you're thinking about making a silky dress I would say six meters is more than enough I could have probably done this with a bit less if I wanted less poofing but I'm always like more better <laughs> but I love this dress I just feel so pretty in it and want to twirl around constantly my only gripe is that I don't know how I got just one bit that's slightly too poofy but I just leave it alone yeah I'm so sorry about ladies and gentle babies half of that clip me showing you that dress is me having this tucked up halfway with my bum so if you saw it looking weird at the back 
that was why. This is probably my fav favourite mate today. I'll keep you guys updated on what kind of projects I'm pursuing next. Hope you enjoyed the little try on section. Sorry it was so long winded and not completely planned out. I ended up having plans midway through filming this so I kind of had to rush towards the end of this. Hopefully you can still gauge all the things I've been making. Hopefully you take this as a sign to start a project or finish a project you've been creating and making. Also if you're ever worried that you're not good enough. We all have to start somewhere and I definitely always look to people as motivation now and inspiration rather than comparing myself because they were probably once in the same spot as me being a newbie sewer or being a student to the sew game so never get too worried or too caught up and remember we're meant to make mistakes not every garment I've made has come out perfection the first time sometimes it's good to do mock-ups two three four mock-ups before you cut your precious fabric so yeah don't get too worried about that remember just to have fun so I hope you liked my little show and tell guys and scene that was a lot a lot of things we just saw isn't it um what y'all think don't roast me in the comments if you made it to the end of this video thank you guys so much for watching you have really have been keeping me on my tippy toes with wanting to create content and thinking of ideas to share and show you guys so thank you for that again thank you for your support i always read the comments and you guys are just <laughs> some of the nicest people um, but um yeah if you have anything you want to share with me any content creators or other youtubers who you think i'd be interested in or even your stuff you want to show me defo just hit me up leave a comment below i love hearing from you guys other than that stay absolutely goddamn gorgeous because eat dessert but most importantly stay you and i'll see you guys when i see you guys bye <laughs>